Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. My name is AES and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you have seen my ranking of the top 100 video games of all time, you already know this story. Let me retell it in case you have not watched that video. When I used to live in Israel, my dad would come to the States for business trips. After one of his visits, he came back home and gave me the PC version of Halo Combat Evolved. I had not heard about the game prior to that day, but I decided to install the game and give it a try. I immediately fell in love with it. Ever since that day, I made it my mission to play through every Halo game, and after completing Halo 3 ODST and Halo Wars 2 this past year, I officially finished a playthrough of every Halo game in existence. While we are waiting for Halo Infinite's release, supposedly this holiday season, I thought it would be nice to go back, critique, and rank every Halo game. What are my thoughts about the series? Time to find out. Without further ado, let us review and rank every Halo game from worst to best. Number 13, Halo Recruit for the Windows Mixed Reality VR. Since I want to be honest with you guys, I will admit that I have not actually played Halo Recruit. Therefore, this entry on the list will not be a review, but rather an explanation as to why Halo Recruit is at the bottom of the list. There are two reasons for it. On one hand, it is only available on Windows Mixed Reality headsets that are made by Microsoft, which force you to purchase one of those headsets to play the title. That is not the biggest issue though, since I have praised PlayStation VR exclusive video games in the past. On the other hand, Halo Recruit is more like a technical demo than an actual game. You talk to 343 Guilty Spark and then shoot some targets. Then Cortana gives you a ranking based on your performance. Finally, Master Chief welcomes you to the squad and the experience ends. It is similar to when I went to Best Buy and checked out the various demos on the PlayStation VR. I do not know if Halo Recruit is good or bad, but the exclusivity to Windows Mixed Reality VR headsets and the lack amount of content attribute to the number 12 pick on the list. Number 12, Halo Wars 2 for the Xbox One. 
Conveniently, the latest Halo video game on console is at last place when it comes to Halo gaming experiences. It is a shame since the original Halo Wars is a solid title, and we will talk about it later. For now, let us focus on the sequel, and we will start with a synopsis of the story. 28 years after the last adventure with the Spirit of Fire, the ship becomes operational again and the crew attempts to figure out what is happening around them. As it turns out, the Brutes now have a powerful presence in the universe and the Spartans learn about it firsthand when they come face to face with Atriox, the leader of the Brutes. From that point onward, the Spartans go back and forth with Atriox's forces until the ending of the game. That is it for the story, which was semi-engaging from start to finish. I wish that Atriox was featured more often in the beautifully rendered cutscenes, but I enjoyed his performance in the beginning of the game. In addition to the narrative, Halo Wars 2 also looks beautiful across the board, whether it is the aforementioned set of cutscenes or the environmental models during gameplay. The music is also spectacular and continues to prove why Halo has one of the best all-around soundtracks in gaming. The game's presentation and plot are solid, but that is where the positive aspects go away. Halo Wars 2 suffers from two major problems that, at first, forced me to take a break and continue with it another day. First, at the time of my first playthrough early this year, the game was massively bugged and littered with glitches and game-breaking moments. In fact, the game crashed on me four times during the first five minutes of playtime, which is unacceptable. The other negative mechanic is noticeable during the gameplay. In most cases, you will be tasked with crafting different sections of your base, use them to summon Spartans and vehicles, and then strategically accomplish your goal on the map. Unfortunately, the time to gather resources has been substantially increased from Halo Wars 1, making the entire campaign a chore to complete. There is also a multiplayer component to the title, but it is a step back instead of a step forward for the game due to inconsistent frame rates. I wanted to like Halo Wars 2 more than I currently do, especially since I was invested in the story and the gorgeous presentation, but the hindrances I reference here made me wish that I did not spend as much time with the game as I did. I will give Halo Wars 2 from 2017 a 4 out of 10. Number 11, Halo Spartan Strike for the PC. The next two picks on the list can be grouped together, since they are essentially the same game, but with different missions and a different placement in the timeline of Halo. Halo Spartan Strike is ranked lower than its predecessor because it is the sequel in the twin-stick shooting catalog of the franchise and it barely has changed. The controls are slightly improved and thankfully the microtransactions are gone. However, that is it for the gameplay improvements, which is disappointing and makes Spartan Strike feel like downloadable content for Spartan Assault. As I already mentioned, this game is a top-down twin-stick shooter, where you move your character through short missions, point your mouse in the desired direction, and fire at enemies. Despite the title's simplicity, it is not a walk in the park. You still must use cover to recover health. The Covenant forces hit you and hit you hard, so be prepared. Spartan Strike was made with phones in mind, and the visual and audio designs of the title are rather good for a title on the phone. There is also a story here, but it is presented with either still images and a voiceover in the background, or mid-battle conversations that give you context about the missions themselves. Basically, you play as a nameless Spartan that is asked to retrieve a Forerunner artifact. Suddenly, the enemies invade and you must stop them. It is the typical run-in-the-mill invasion tale, and if you want to skip this game, you will not miss anything essential but the lore of the Halo franchise. Halo Spartan Strike is functional, and the same cannot be said about Halo Wars 2. Nevertheless, it is a video game that I will never replay. I will give Halo Spartan Strike from 2015 a 5.5 out of 10. Number 10, Halo Spartan Assault for the Xbox One. I will keep this entry short and sweet, because everything minus the story from the last entry can be copied over to Halo Spartan Assault. The gameplay is the same. The presentation is the same. The mission structure is the same. As far as the story is concerned, you must stop Mergval, a leader of the Covenant fleet who attacks a certain moon by the off chance of activating a certain Forerunner artifact. Huh, sounds a tad familiar to the villain's goal in Spartan Strike. Anyway, Halo Spartan Assault is clearly a game that is made for mobile devices. It is not terrible, but there are much better twin-stick shooting games that are worthy of your time and money. I will give Halo Spartan Assault from 2013 a 6 out of 10. 
Number 9, Halo 3 ODST for the Xbox 360. Halo 3 ODST is an interesting case for me. I played it for the first time in 2009 when it came out and I was bored out of my mind. It was not because it did not star Master Chief. I actually welcomed a Halo game that had a different protagonist. If it had a good story, I could not care less. After 20 minutes, I dropped the title. I did not care about the characters and the present day moments of Halo 3 ODST revolved around walking from point A to point B for 90% of the time. Coincidentally, they were the only problems that I experienced when I replayed the game early this year for this review. While the story is decent, which we will summarize shortly, the characters do not receive much characterization. It is clear that they are part of a long-lasting squad, but you do not know anything about either character. We do not know much about Master Chief for Halo 1 through 3, but his interactions with Cortana made up for it. The same spark is not present among the personnel of ODST. The annoyance that I experienced back in 2009 about the mission structure of present day moments remains in 2021. The narrative puts you in a random city and you must find your teammates and escape the planet. As you play in modern times, you literally walk from point A to point B, which bugs down the pacing and gives me the impression that a good portion of the campaign feels like padding. During those missions, you activate a flashback, and then you play the flashback, which closely resembles traditional Halo gameplay. The only difference is the shield mechanic. In the previous Halo titles, you have a shield meter that depletes, and it is then when you must be extremely careful and hide somewhere. In Halo 3 ODST, it is obvious that you have a shield that recharges and depletes, but it is more akin to Call of Duty games. When you play Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, the redder the screen became, the more alerted you should be because you're about to die. The same situation occurs in ODST. Issues aside, Halo 3 ODST is decent. The gunplay maintains the fun factor of the franchise, the visuals are great, if a tad bleak, and the new firefight mode, aka a Halo Horde mode, is wonderful. I'm glad that I gave Halo 3 ODST another chance, but it does not climb higher on my list of the best Halo titles than the number 9 spot. I will give Halo 3 ODST from 2009 a 7.5 out of 10. Number 8, Halo Fireteam Raven for the arcade. I have never heard about Halo Fireteam Raven prior to making this video. An arcade title that is based on the franchise with Master Chief? I was hooked. Thankfully, there is a store with arcades nearby that includes this game, and after I played it for a few hours, I must say that I was entertained. It is the traditional light gun experience where you use a plastic accessory to blast away various forms of the Covenant forces while attempting to increase your score as much as possible. The calibration works well, and the visuals and music are great for a light gun arcade title. The cool part about Halo Fireteam Raven is the ability to play with 4 players, which reminded me of the old school Halo moments where you hooked up several original Xbox consoles and played Halo 1 and 2. Speaking of which, the 6 included levels pay tribute to the original Halo title, and I thought it was neat. Halo Fireteam Raven does not stray too far from other games in the genre, but it does what it does well. I will give Halo Fireteam Raven from 2018 a 7.5 out of 10. Number 7, Halo 5 for the Xbox One. It would not be surprising if I found Halo 5 at the bottom of many people's lists. I'll cover the positive aspects of the game first, and then commence with a description of a few issues. Here we go. The visuals and soundtrack are absolutely outstanding. The lighting that reflects off of the Spartan's armor and various environments is exceptional, the character models are spot on, and the weapons themselves look fantastic. The music. You already know how much I love Halo music. I have to give a special shout out to the sounds that come out of the active weapons, which were improved from Halo 3 to 4 and continue their improvements in Halo 5. They simply feel impactful and powerful with each fired shot. I really enjoy everything about the title's presentation. As far as the gameplay, I can't say that I have been bored a single time while engaging with the level design and enemies in Halo 5. The weapons and vehicles are fun to use, both in campaign and multiplayer. Speaking of gameplay, there is an elephant in the room that we must address. For the first time in a Halo title, you can aim down the sight with various weapons and sprint. Many die-hard fans of the franchise are not happy about those changes, as they believe they take away from what made Halo special in the first place. As someone who started with Halo 1 but does not have the same connection with those die-hard fans, 
I welcome those changes. They make the Halo experience more streamlined and I appreciate it. The last positive aspect about Halo 5 is the narrative, which takes some interesting turns. I will not spoil it, but the relationship between Master Chief and Cortana takes an unexpected turn and I look forward to further explore it with the upcoming Halo Infinite. The game had an abrupt ending, but I do not mind it currently since I know the Halo Infinite will continue from where Halo 5 ended. Now, it is time to dive into the negative portions of the latest mainstream Halo title. Since we briefly discussed the narrative, let's start here. Generally speaking, the story focuses on Team Osiris going after Master Chief because the higher up commanders of the Spartans believe that the protagonist from the original four titles has gone rogue. Although it was cool to see the team from Halo 3 ODST back, I still have not learned anything about any of the members. It is evident that the stars of the show are Master Chief and Cortana, and the fact that you play as the forgettable members of the Osiris team for the majority of the game without additional exploration of each character is mind-boggling. Next, you fight the primary guardian of the Prometheans at least 7 times without any variation to the combat system. It is lazy, predictable, and lacks any tension since you know exactly how to defeat the boss after your first attempt. The inclusion of several copies of the same boss during the last encounter is not creative and does not change the game, it is straight up mundane. Lastly, we of course must discuss the misleading advertisements for Halo 5. During those ads you are given the impression that the leader of the Osiris team and Master Chief would have an epic match, but it turns out to be nothing more than a cutscene without any player interaction. I was disappointed by it, but I know many people who were also angry because there was a lack of choice, even though the advertisements made it seem as if there will be player based choices. Halo 5 is a good entry in the series, but the title's discouraging moments do anything but encourage you to play the campaign more than once. There's one more point I would like to mention before wrapping up this entry on the list. Halo 5 includes a multiplayer mode where the higher ups of 343 Industries obviously wanted you to spend money on microtransactions to access more unlockables. I really hope that Halo Infinite will not include microtransactions because, if anything, it is the lack of microtransactions accompanied by pure enjoyable gameplay that made Halo special in the first place. I will give Halo 5 from 2016 an 8 out of 10. Number 6, Halo Wars for the Xbox 360. I did not expect to like Halo Wars as much as I did. Lo and behold, I was proven wrong. Halo Wars is a great strategy title that is a nice change of pace from the typical first person shooting experiences from the rest of the franchise's catalog. While you do not play as a specific character per se, you take control of the Spartan forces while fighting Covenant enemies. The story is not memorable, but it gives both teams a goal in mind. The Covenant forces attempt to take control of numerous planets to gain access to Forerunner technology. The Spartans attempt to stop the Covenant's plans. How does it feel to stop the enemies via strategic gameplay? Well, it is a slow burner for sure. Like I said during my Halo Wars 2 entry, you are tasked with building different portions of your base, summoning allies, whether personnel or vehicular, and either defeat everyone on the map or complete another task, such as defending a position or defusing a dangerous situation. The difference between Halo Wars 1 and 2 is simple. One is functional, the other is not functional. Or at the very least buggy. You should know by now which is which. Furthermore, the grind to gather resources for your creations is not as tedious as the process in Halo Wars 2. Do not get it twisted, Halo Wars is not a perfect title. There are a few unresolved threads in the story, and there are frame rate drops sprinkled throughout the campaign or the cooperative experience. With that being said, I think that you would notice the good portions of Halo Wars more than the worst ones. The cutscenes are very impressive for the time, the gameplay is incredibly rewarding with the right amount of patience, the story has its captivating moments, and the character models and music are great. If you want to play a Halo title that has a different set of mechanics from other titles in the series, Halo Wars will not be a bad game to try, especially when the title is available on Game Pass at this point in time. I will give Halo Wars from 2009 an 8.3 out of 10. Number 5, Halo Reach for the Xbox 360. Chronologically, Halo Reach is the very first mainline Halo game. However, a part of me wants to recommend that you would play Reach after you wrap up Halo 1. Once you finish Halo Combat Evolved, you would understand how this entry wraps up its campaign. 
Unfortunately, it does not ruin or take away anything from the quality or quantity of Halo Reach. Let us not get ahead of ourselves and go step by step from here. The story is quite generic with sparks of emotional scenes. It is the predictable experience where humans live peacefully on Earth when an alien force comes along and starts to take over the planet. As you play through the story, you realize that you cannot stop the entire evil fleet. So your goal changes and now you must save as many civilians as possible. Even if you never played Halo 1, you may be able to predict everything that happens up until the ending. I would like to talk about the finale very quickly. If you do not want to be spoiled, skip to this moment in the video. I will briefly discuss the final mission. You have been warned, let's go. At the end of the game, your character stays behind while the rest of the fleet escapes the planet. Then you are given a single objective, survive. You may think to yourself, okay, I must kill everyone, find a spaceship and escape. Come to find out, it is a lose-lose situation. Ultimately, the enemies prove to be too much to handle and they kill you. It is a scene that I did not expect and quite frankly, it cements this mission as one of my favorite sequences of any Halo title. Story aside, the shooting mechanics remain great from previous entries in the series, the multiplayer component is top notch, and the presentation is not half bad per the standards of Halo. I would have loved to place Halo Reach higher on the list, but several unanswered questions and unmemorable characters glue the title to the number 5 spot. I will give Halo Reach from 2010 a 9 out of 10. Number 4, Halo Combat Evolved for the PC. The very first Halo title and the one that kickstarted my love of the franchise, Halo Combat Evolved is an excellent game. You play as Master Chief, a famous Spartan, who is accompanied by an AI companion, Cortana, and must repel incoming Covenant and Flood forces. It is a synopsis of the game, but honestly, that is the gist of the narrative. You do not get any characterization for Master Chief or Cortana, Although the conversations between the two characters are entertaining, the side characters are either forgettable or stereotypical. There is no explanation with regards to the Covenant species or their true goals during their presence on the Halo ring. Nevertheless, you keep playing for hours and hours for two reasons. First, the gameplay is incredibly smooth. You cannot aim down the side with your weapons or sprint, but the combat mechanics feel amazing, whether you play offline in the campaign or online against human opponents. On the other hand, the soundtrack is engrossing, and it may be the best selection of tunes for any game in 2003 or ever. There are other aspects that must be commended. The semi-open world level designs are great for the time, even though there were a few instances where I could not figure out what to do or where I was supposed to go. The voiceovers are serviceable, particularly with the two protagonists and Sergeant Johnson. The enemy AI is excellent and they will be remorseless on the higher heroic and legendary difficulties. The vehicles are manageable, and it is cool that you are informed about the health of core riders and the vehicles themselves. My only complaint with Halo Combat Evolved is my assumption that some story bits overstay their welcome. A perfect example is the library stage, which lasts for way too long. The gameplay that you see on screen right now is from someone who completed the level in 30 minutes. The checkpoint system might be good, but 30 minutes for a single level is a tad overboard. I also had numerous moments when I expected instrumental music in the background, and there was dead silence. The other detail that may be a nuisance to some folks during the multiplayer sessions is the fact that the Spartan pistol is very overpowered. During the campaign, it can kill the small enemies with one shot to the head. The same can be said to the hunters from the back and the other big enemies who require a few more shots to the head. In multiplayer, it can be an issue if everyone is using a pistol and aiming for the head. These issues are nitpicking in what is otherwise a well-made video game and it is a cool introduction to the franchise as a whole. I will give Halo Combat Evolved from 2003 a 9.6 out of 10. Number 3, Halo 3 for the Xbox 360. If Halo 4, 5 and Infinite were never made, I would be perfectly content with the way Halo 3 concluded the trilogy. The story continues directly from the abrupt climax of Halo 2, where Cortana has been taken hostage and Master Chief has two objectives, defeat the remaining Covenant enemies and rescue Cortana from the Flood. The stars of the show are undoubtedly Master Chief and Cortana and their relationship is explored in an extremely engaging way. Whether it is the face-to-face -face interactions or the mental visions, 
I love the connection between these two characters. The Arbiter is also a fantastic companion, as his side story receives a fantastic and satisfying ending, similar to the conclusion in general. The three top spots on the list made it very hard for me to find a negative aspect for each pick. But I do not believe that there is a flawless title that has no room for growth. When it comes to Halo 3, it is the lack of enemy variety. The Covenant, Flood, and Brutes remain and pose a formidable challenge to the 117 Spartan, but additional enemy types would have been much appreciated and no, I do not count the boss fights in the game as additions to the enemy variety. There's one more small problem that I would like to address. It may be just me, but I was somewhat stuck for a few minutes while playing the Cortana level. It may be the level design, where you have to find the correct spot to proceed to the next section of the stage, or the constant instances where you go further down the right path. Eventually I was able to find my goal and beat the level, but it was clearly aggravating. That being said, everything else about the game is superb. The visuals and sound designs are greatly improved from Halo 2, particularly in the music department. The new abilities, such as creating shields and holograms, are very fun, although some core players did not enjoy them. The multiplayer also continues to be stellar. I will spoil the score for the next two games only to explain why Halo 3 will receive a slightly lower score. Number 1 and number 2 on this list will receive a 10 out of 10 from me. Why is Halo 3 not a 10 out of 10? It is because of the lack of new enemies. If new variations of the Flood, Covenant, and Brute Forces were incorporated during the campaign, Halo 3 would have received a perfect score as well. Nonetheless, I will give Halo 3 from 2007 a 9.8 out of 10. Number 2, Halo 2 for the Xbox. In my last entry, I referenced the ending to Halo 2. It is considered by many individuals as one of the worst endings of all time, due to its nature as a cliffhanger. I do not deny that it is a cliffhanger, and if I were bothered by it as much as those folks, Halo 2 would have been lower on the list. However, I accepted the ending. I wanted more Halo content immediately after reaching the conclusion, but I do not consider the ending as terrible. If you want to see a terrible ending, go play Daylight. Come talk to me afterwards. This thirst for more Halo gameplay should prove to you how much I love Halo 2. Before we dissect the sequel to one of my favorite video games of all time, I must address a certain part of my scoring system. When a product receives a 10 out of 10 from me, I'm not calling it a flawless product. Nothing is flawless. Instead, a 10 out of 10 product for me, or in this case, a video game, is something where the positive aspects completely overshadow the negative aspects to the point that the latter are not noticeable or can easily be ignored. Halo 2 is a perfect example. Everything from Halo 1 has been substantially improved. The gunplay now implements dual wielding weapons. The levels are slightly smaller than Halo 1 stages, but they do not make the continuation to Master Chief's adventure linear. The multiplayer is more balanced than ever. The included boss fights are incredible. The post credit scene is intense and makes you eager for Halo 3. The story. The story is entertaining and finally gives the protagonist and antagonist characterizations and reasons for what they do. In Halo 2, you play as two characters. On one hand, you play as Master Chief, who continues his quest to drive the enemies away from Earth, prevent them from activating the Halo Ring, and stop them from destroying life across the universe. On the other hand, you play as the Arbiter, who is a bad guy turned good guy Covenant character. Through his perspective, you interact with the Covenant Prophets, who explain that they want to go on this religious journey by activating the rings and eliminating all evil. The religious references are abound, but they are never forced. They call Master Chief the Demon, which I thought was cool. The interesting part about playing as Master Chief and the Arbiter is the set of differences between the characters. Each of them has their respective weapons, with Master Chief resorting to the traditional assault rifle, shotgun, and pistol, and the Arbiter can turn invisible for a short period of time and has a laser-based sword. I understand the problems that some folks had with the title's ending, but Halo 2's highlights act like a magician. They make the worry about the game's finale disappear. 
I will give Halo 2 from 2004 a 10 out of 10. Number 1, Halo 4 for the Xbox 360. You may or may not know this little detail about me, but I hold the game's narrative at the highest level of importance. From my perspective, story is number 1, music is number 2, gameplay is number 3, and visuals refer to number 4. Taking into consideration every title on the list prior to the first pick, I would say that Halo 3 has the best soundtrack, Halo 2 has the best gameplay, and Halo 5, due to the fact that it is the latest mainstream release, has the best graphics. Nonetheless, I cannot pinpoint another Halo title that has a bigger, more emotional, and more enthralling story than the one present in Halo 4. The relationship between Cortana and Master Chief reaches its climax, as it turns out that Cortana is approaching the end of her lifespan. As the fractures in her AI are showcased throughout the campaign, you cannot help but feel sorry for Cortana and John, aka Master Chief himself. By the time the credits roll, you know more about the characters in question as the finale punches an emotional hole in your gut. The plot is fantastic, but it is not the only plus in Halo 4. The sound effects of the weapons are superb and feel more Herculean than ever. The new Promethean enemy and their associated arsenal of weaponry is a blast to fight and utilize. The mission structure is more varied than ever. Most Halo titles revolve around going from point A to point B on the map by walking or optionally using vehicles. Each mission in Halo 4 is unique. One mission will task you with traversing a forest to your destination, while another will ask you to fly a spacecraft to the desired location. The music is also incredible, increasing in intensity when major fights occur and decreasing in intensity when important story bits are illustrated. Similar to Halo 2, the game has a hidden flaw. This time, it is an illogical decision that happens during the final boss. I will not spoil it here, but feel free to send me a private message on Twitter and I will happily discuss the ending with you. Halo 4 has the best narrative in the franchise and that reason, including the other examples of great quality aspects for the game, are why Halo 4 is my favorite Halo title of all time as of the recording of this video. I will give Halo 4 from 2012 a 10 out of 10 as well. Well folks, that is the end of the video. Thank you so much for checking it out. Have you played the Halo titles? Which is your favorite entry in the series? Which is your least favorite? Please let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Till next time, have a great day or evening wherever you are. My name is AES and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.